Yo, welcome back. Today we're on a bit of a different project. So we're at a pool house, believe it or not. I'll spin you around now and show you the property. We've got a 35 mil armoured going to a further out building that we're going to be cutting into, putting a G Suisse uh, waterproof IP rated box on the outside where those cable, well, old water pumps supplies are going through, cut them off, and then they're going to be our holes into the pool hut. So there's going to be a waterproof box there with a Verso fuse board in it. This 35 mil armoured cable, we've got a pull up all the way to there, get enough slack to be able to gland it in. I've never done a 35 mil free core armoured in my life, so it's gonna suck. So this is just some of the materials we're using. We've got a G-Swiss box, 30 meters of 25 armoured. Um, that's gonna be doing two lengths, which is gonna be going to the boiler and the water filtration system and all that over there. And then we've got a Verso fuse board, loads of glands. The reason we're cutting into this 35 mil armoured is because this is the current armoured cable which is like a little four mil or six mil it's tiny and it's not enough to run all of the necessary needs inside this pool house obviously lovely property with lots of grounds if i bring you on the inside so that armour comes in in that corner obviously doing all the different stuff for the swimming pool and then the plan is of this is to have like kitchens ovens like a little pool hut with a few sockets and a mini kitchen and then like a little bit of a bar so then in the summer you can just come in here grab a drink have some food and that, and then get back straight back in the swimming pool. But let's get back to the boring electrical work. So this is the current fuse board, old Proteus fuse board, obviously lights with no RCD protection. Boiler, pump and socket does have RCD protection. Bit of a mixed match of everything, but we're just gonna rip all this out. And uh, obviously it'll all be new on the outside. The reason we want it on the outside is so it doesn't take up worktop space or cabinet space, because ultimately this is gonna be now a nice luxury kitchen area so that's enough waffling let's get pulling this 35 mil armored john's kindly cutting them out of the way right let's try and pull this out the ground yeah. not happening no. not happening at all obviously i've got my lovely vd rated spade here <laughs> so john's kindly ripped out all the pipes ripped them all out of the soil so they're all redundant now we've been pulling and pulling this massive armored cable and fighting stuff like this so tree roots not fun but we've uh, we've managed to get the majority of it out now as you can see there what my plan is obviously leave it all surface like the builders have done and then i'll connect it all up and then get the builders to obviously dig it down to the correct height put some of the tape back in put some pea gravel over it do a nice job but obviously they need like a little little digger really just scrape a little hole or you can bury it by hand but obviously we want to try and get the power on for the lads doing the plumbing today so We'll get this all done now, this last little bit, and then get it wired up. Right, I finished digging. So, dug all this lot up. Obviously, it wasn't buried at the correct height. It did have tape on it, though, so that's one little bonus. Um, obviously, it's all redundant now, but obviously, it's all gonna... This whole area is getting redone, refenced, redug down, resurfaced. So, obviously, the builders can put it in at the correct depth um, and actually put the correct tape, and obviously, some people like to put pea gravel and stuff on it. So, I've ripped all this out now, and then found out where it goes from here, about another two, 300 meters, something daft like that to another outbuilding. So obviously we can cut it here. And then from there, we've got all this slack to play with to go into the, onto that wall there. And then there's still enough slack for them to play with it and bury it. So let's go and turn off the power down the bottom, isolate this armored cable, confirm that no one's using any equipment further up there because there's some builders up there. They might have an extension leader that's not plugged in. So I'll go and investigate up there, turn off the power, get this cut and then we can get them out in the box. The plot thickens, another dilemma has cropped up. So I'll give you a bit of background. This pool hut here, well this 35 mil armoured cable has nothing to do with this pool hut currently. It goes all the way, about another 100 odd metres, probably a bit more, to another fancy barn that's derelict down there, which is going to be turned into a fancy barn, sorry, uh, barn conversion. However, the current landowner I'm working for has sold that. So that's separate builders up there and they're currently still using that supply. They've had a free phase supply installed, but it doesn't get turned on for 10 days. So they're left for 10 days without any electricity, which obviously being neighbors and that, you wanna be nice, give them a little bit of electricity to the builders. Like I say, they're only charging it for charging the batteries, using a kettle, stuff like that, just getting by, doing their job. It's not really their fault and they have had a new supply installed. It's just Western Power are holding them up a little bit. Obviously that throws a bit of a spanner in the works. You don't want to annoy your neighbors, but then the only downside is I'm going to have to cut this cable there. So then I've got enough slack this side to make this side look pretty and safe. But then ultimately I'm going to have to put a torpedo joint on that 
and then also extend or somehow connect 35 mil armored temporary in a whisker box or something into this side so then they still have power so we're down at the house now you can see that armored cable here it's all got to be reburied but it comes up here up along here into here there's loads of different supplies here there's going to be all sorts being changed out here but i've just isolated this by turning it off and obviously i am going to lock it out tag it out right on the label to make sure i'm safe working all the way on the other side of that hut and also the lads further on are safe because you don't want someone just coming in and thinking oh why is why is my outbuilding power not working and then just flicking a switch and then ultimately i'm going to pay the price i think that's sufficient lock off locked tag it up with my name phone number i'll put one of my labels on it with all everything else on it it's only gonna be on for overnight but at least i'd rather be safe than sorry and then i've also just tied a bit of a sleeve around it just to make sure you literally can't move it um but yeah nice and locked off so you can see the current state of the power in here obviously it's metal clad sockets all corroded and rusted ceilings falling through lights obviously this was all still on prior to me coming here and then if we go in the next one you'll see the current state of the fuse board so i'm fine with actually leaving the armored cable in and reusing that as the supply for when we redo all the work in here or another electrician but as you can see there's singles exposed um, but the main thing is obviously we've got that armored cable into here and then you can work from that to supply whatever they want up here you can see as well how there's no blanks in that fuse board so you can literally see the buzz bar you could put your fingers on it and get electric shock it's not good we're going to make it a bit safer um obviously just block it all off turn isolate all this so i've just tested obviously confirmed the test is working then i see do the sequence of tests and then just confirm the test is working again on this armored cable here so i've checked that whole fuse board is dead um, and obviously that's the supply incoming cable on the bottom which then feeds out into the Henley blocks and then from the Henley blocks you've got feed down to this fuse board and then also from the Henley blocks you've got that armoured cable at the top there which is landed in straight into that Henley blocks as that one up there goes displays out out there and feeds into another fuse board which I'll show you in about five seconds. I'm in barn number two now or three or four I've lost count but this is the one where it's going to be converted into a barn conversion and as you can see, this is where the armoured cable comes in. It's 35mm armoured. Double check that's all dead, which I'm 99% sure it is, because I've just checked the Henley box which feed it. So we're about half hour later. We've progressed on. Obviously, confirmed that was dead um, visually and testing it that side. But then obviously with armoured cables like this, you've got about a 50 to 100 metre run that way and another 50 to 100 metre run that way. You physically can't follow it underground because... You're not going to dig up the cable to confirm it i've locked it off isolated it as you saw tested up that side it was dead now to double triple check before i just go gunzo with the grinder and cut through this and potentially could be a different cable and then go bang i've done something a little bit different it doesn't look pretty but it's just for my safety and obviously i'm newer to working with cables like this so people can moan as much as they want but ultimately it's all going to get cut off so why not spend five ten minutes of my life saving my life rather than killing myself so what i've done is a bit like the cable jointers do stripped it all back obviously not pretty because it's all going to get ground off in a second but stripped it back and then exposed the earth and the live and tested between the two and that is dead and then also i'm going to do the neutral underneath so let's get this cut with a grinder and then let's get that new box mounted verso board mounted in there and all the armors made off you know that goggles on tool plus blade in let's get this cut easy as that it's cut I've just unboxed the dewis board and the verso board so this is the proposed plan of attack uh big shout out to john for supplying acosta if i lift this off it's that waterproof enclosure obviously with the different screws then obviously you'd be greeted with this verso fuse board here um really nice and obviously that was sitting there perfect perfect height wise so obviously glanding the armoreds i'm in two minds here whether to gland the armoreds into the plastic and then keep the second layer of insulation because obviously it's enclosed within an enclosure and just put stuffing glands into the bottom because I've got enough room there for a stuffing gland which I probably will more inclined to do that or put a 
like a stuffing gland, but then I'd have to put a massive stuffing gland and then clamp it onto the armoured outer sheathing. But I've already decided in my head for them last 10 seconds of talking, I'm gonna go glands into them, stuffing glands into them, so then everything's IP. So after lots of planning, this is what we've came up with. So we have got a 20 mil uh, armoured gland on the left, a 20S. We've got a big 32 for the armoured supply in. Then we've got a future proof 25 mil stuffing gland, Another one of them future-proofed because I'm thinking, obviously, put it as low as possible so it's out on out of the way. And then we've got another big 32, which will go to the outbuilding going the other way. And then we've got the other 20S, which will supply. So the two 20Ss are to the boilers. And then following on, obviously, we've kept it all nice and in line. Um, it's not obviously exact because I've not mounted the board yet to this actual plastic enclosure. But I've put all the stuffing glands in. So my plan is with the armoureds is to take the armoureds into here and I'll see the strip the outer sheathing off and then in here just take the flex as such through and then one in that side, one in that side and then you've got the bottom nice and free. But what I have actually done, because obviously I'm going to fasten that fuse board in, future proofed, put the stuffing glands in ready for any additional works. A few people might say different alternative ways of doing this. This is the best way I think personally of doing it because you've got the outdoor glands, so you've got that waterproof in. Obviously these two are just additional ones for future works. And then you've also got the ingress protection inside the fuse board. Obviously this whole enclosure is waterproof. These are waterproof, that's waterproof. Just trying to do the best job I can. So then I'm gonna pick that whole lot up, bring it over here. I've dug out a nice flat area so I can get it nice and low, but then still kept this off and scrapped scraped, scrape that bit off so I know the finished floor level roughly um, so then obviously I can I've just basically dug this bit out so I'm going to do the glands up underneath nice and tight because playing with this cable and bending this is not going to be fun now we're on to tackling obviously future works inside getting cables through there and reusing these existing holes so give me a second and I'll bring you across I've done the back knockouts so then Obviously we can use them on the two existing holes or the four existing holes, depending on which side I want it, but I want it further to the right because that's the customer's request. So let's eye this up roughly of how we want it. Um, so obviously looking there, the holes are going to be about there. So then obviously we're still above finished floor level and now it's just tackling how I'm going to get through the back into inside through them holes, whether that be poke some waste pipe through and put an adapter inside here um, but it just depends what I can find speak to the plumber see what he's got so that's what it's going to be like we've got two pipes on the right one pipe on the left to go through for the electrics inside so that's all working now's the fun part glanding that 35 mil armoured into that outdoor CW through that stuffing gland to feed this fuse board fingers crossed it all goes well got the electrician's nipex knife some grips all the tools no idea what I'm doing because it's 35 mil armoured. You can see how big that is. Don't know if the armoured slice will fit around that. Might have to get my little junior axle out. Feel like I'm back at college. Um, but before we do everything, anything, let's do the bit that everyone forgets. Starting with the shroud. So let's get that cut nice and snug and slid on. That's the shroud on. Now we're going to need a bit of willpower. So Maryland to the rescue. Let's uh, bend this round, see how much we're going to need. Get stripping and uh, let's get that glanded off. Figured out how much I need. Armour slice did work. So I'll unwind that now, just span it around loads and then strip off this outer sheathing, flick off the armourings and then strip a bit more, probably like that much and then uh, get that armoured in. Started raining, I've been wrestling cables. Both armoureds are in and obviously the big chunky one. So next morning we're back, the GoPro died yesterday. Managed to get majority of it done. The only thing we haven't got done yet is extending that armoured cable with more 35 mil because zero wholesalers have any 35 mil free core armoured. Even some of them didn't even have 25 mil, but because of such run distance to their mother sheds, it needs to be 35 mil. And ideally, I'm going to run it off a 63 amp breaker and then to that separate fuse board. But I'm having a new fuse board and stuff down there. But overall, I managed to get one armoured in and the other little armoured. So the two little armoureds over to the swimming pool stuff over there. The big chunky armoured, managed to get that in. Obviously all the rest of the glands are in ready. I'll take this lid off now and show you my absolute masterpiece. And then I've also fabricated this. So the will bush and coupler, I picked them up this morning and some more 25 mil conduit. So this will bush and coupler be a nice waterproof fitting going through that wall. We'll expand the foam around the pipes 
and uh, silicon it all up so it's all nice and waterproof what i did last night was i left that there on the cardboard so it wouldn't soak into the back holes and then put this tum bag over it so it's all nice and waterproof just a little bit of water splashed on from this morning dripping off this roof but i'll take this lid off and we'll have a look inside so with this lid here it's just a flat head put them in and then just twist it only takes a few seconds on each one so that's that out and then do that on all six and obviously that maintains the ip rating of this enclosure nearly forward in the mud about five times as you can see it's uh, lovely and muddy showing off my little chicken legs but got my 25 mil uh, conduit adapters in there now so they're sticking through on the back as you can see there gonna i've already got two lengths for 25 mil on that side gonna pull that white out get that bit of black 25 cut that a bit shorter jam that through attach it all on i've already put some raw plugs in this wall somewhere yesterday and then i can screw into this bottom wooden beam as well so let's get this all screwed to get back to the wall ideally i would have liked to the reason i didn't screw it back yesterday was i needed to put them conduit adapters on so after lots of wrestling we've got that all back secured to the wall cleaned up a bit armored cables second layer of sheathing is into the fuse board stripped ready just got to heat shrink it up click all the rcbo's in the main incomers are all in so now i've just got to make good of all the holes where the screws go through silicon on all of them so there's no water ingress inside i'm going to do like an outdoor socket trick and actually put a bead of silicon all the way along all the way down the sides so then it's got that extra extra layer of ingress protection and then on the inside obviously expandy foam where the pipes come through the bits of conduit um but yeah we got there in the end so now i'm going to hop over with the dave who's wiring up the boiler and put some rotary isolators on for him that's that all silicon back to the wall screwed back Obviously screwed uh, silicon the screws inside as well and um, put a big dollop on each one. So that is all watertight now. I'm happy with that. The only things obviously exposed is obviously underneath the stuffing glands which have no cables in it. But I will put cables in them shortly. So now I've pulled that cable back. I've uh, come up with a game plan. So I'm going to put a rotary isolator on this corner here. Gland that big armoured straight into a rotary isolator. And then come out with some... Uh, 25 mil or 35 mil cable depending on what I can get hold of across and then straight into that rotary isolator as well so that will do that and then over there I just need to figure out exactly where they want the uh, two rotary isolators which are on the bin over there the two blue boxes so I'll get them mounted get them two armors glanded off and then we can power up towards them um, rotary isolators so then the boiler lads can play with that uh, and then tomorrow I'll nip back and just quickly sort out that armoured and then we can game plan inside of where they want the cooker where they want the little kitchen going i think it's an elf elf kitchen or something going in i think that's what they're called like a pre-made fab one pretty much all done all them armorings are done just a few last few bits of bobs to do in there i'll show you it once i've powered up and then over here the armors come all the way around all the way around here i've left a little bit of slack behind there nice and cable tied to the big chunky cable obviously this is all to be buried and all to be re redone fencing etc uh, and then down here obviously i've just left all loose put, put loads of cable ties on it for now and then mounted two isolators the customer didn't want them fixed to this stone wall they wanted them fixed to this unit here spoke to the plumber and he said that's fine so i've bolted and washered and nutted that onto there nice and level and uh yeah, so you've got a rotary isolator for each one, rotary isolator to the filter, rotary isolator to the boiler. Jobs are good and let's go and play football and there'll be a part two in this video. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.